Well, I have, yes, over the years. Uh, been involved in issues of authority in the church and uh, you know quite frankly in 1986 the Vatican said that I was no longer suitable nor eligible to be a professor of Catholic theology and uh, this was a rather singular kind of thing in fact they've only made that statement with regard to one other person uh, uh, in the contemporary times so uh, that uh, I have definitely then been involved in, in areas of, uh, of authority in the church and the relationship of individual conscience to church authority. It goes back to that issue that we talked about earlier about dissent in the church. Uh, can one be a loyal Roman Catholic and disagree in theory and in practice with some teachings that are not core and central to faith? And I argued you could. And it seems to me that uh, it, uh, the areas that were involved primarily in this have been the areas of sexuality, contraception, divorce, uh, homosexuality, uh, primarily uh, then issues of uh, ordination of women, uh, et cetera, kinds of things. These are, uh, these are the issues that, practical issues again, that have uh, come up and that I have argued that the church should change its teaching on and that ultimately, uh, even at the present time, Catholics can disagree on these issues in practice. And this created then this, uh, again, tension uh, between the Vatican and myself, which the Vatican uh, resolved by saying that I was neither suitable nor eligible to be a professor of Catholic theology. Now, quite frankly, I think all my colleagues would admit I'm not the only one saying these things. There have been a lot of other people who have said the same thing, who continue to say the same thing. And let me then maybe we obviously can't go into all those specific issues, but uh, just with regard to this whole notion of, uh, of the possibility of dissent, just to say a few things. And uh, uh, a number of things come to mind. Uh, first of all, uh, that many people often see the, the issue as authority versus conscience. Now, again, I think this is a misplaced debate and a misplaced statement of what the issues are here. And the ultimate reason is this, because instead of two terms, authority and conscience, we need a third term. Authority, conscience, and moral truth. Now, moral truth, authority itself, should always try to discover and conform itself to moral truth. Likewise, conscience is always trying to discover and conform itself to moral truth. With regard to authority, even in the Catholic tradition, to its great credit, in my judgment, going back to Thomas Aquinas, Aquinas raised an issue which, when I bring up in class with people sometimes today, they say, oh, that's, why worry about that issue? The issue is this. Is something commanded because it's good, or is it good because it's commanded? But Aquinas' answer was, something is commanded because it's good. In other words, authority has to conform itself to the truth. Authority doesn't make something right or wrong. Something is that good because it's commanded. In fact, again, in the whole Catholic tradition, we've always admitted the possibility of civil disobedience. When the, the, when the civil law uh, goes against what is morally right or the moral truth, then one can break that law kind of thing and go against the letter of the law. So what I'm trying to point out here is that the proper understanding of authority in the Catholic tradition is not something that makes something right or wrong, but authority must conform itself to the truth, and it must use all those means of discernment, having the help of the Holy Spirit, trying to discern what is morally right or morally wrong. So that's the, the first point I would say about dissent, this understanding then of that the issue is not simply authority versus conscience, but both of them are ultimately ruled by moral truth. The second point I would bring out is to recognize that the Catholic Church has changed its moral teaching over the years. 
in fact, the Second Vatican Council's Declaration on Religious Liberty that we talked about before. It made a, a very significant point right in the very beginning. Let me uh, uh, introduce this by raising a question. When did the teaching on religious liberty become true? Did it become true the moment a document was promulgated and signed in Rome? Well, the document itself says no. It admits that the, the members, the bishops of the Second Vatican Council learned from the experience of Christian people about religious freedom. In other words, the document itself recognizes that the teaching on religious freedom was true before the council promulgated the teaching. And so, I mean, I think this is a marvelous illustration of my point that uh, the church uh, itself uh, and, and the bishops in the church uh, have to conform themselves to what is the true and the good. And that, the, and that the church has made mistakes in the past has corrected them. For example, uh, uh, with regard to the whole question of democracy, the 19th century Catholic encyclicals of popes condemned democracy. We said that the one, a pope said freedom of conscience is the sewer into which all garbage flows. A pretty strong statement, huh? Now we tend to forget it, but well, we got to have a dangerous memory that brings up those statements. Uh, even with regard to areas of sexuality, the Catholic Church has changed quite a bit. In the old days, uh, back in the 6th and 7th century, we said that you had to intend procreation. If you did not intend to procreate, it was wrong for married couples to have sexual relations. Nowadays, we say, no, you don't have to intend it. And in fact, accepting the rhythm system, we even said you don't, you not only don't have to intend to procreate, but you can take certain means that would make procreation impossible. So we've changed quite a bit in many areas. And what, I, in fact, you've asked me before what one of my contemporary projects is. I have co-edited a series of readings in moral theology. Just so happens I have one here. Uh, paid political advertisement. Uh, this is, uh, I was working on it for something else. This is volume 12. Volume 13, though, is going to deal precisely with this question of areas in which Catholic teaching or hierarchical teaching has changed. So that's the second point. The church teaching in the past has changed. So therefore we admitted it was error. Therefore the same thing can happen today. Third and finally, I think all of this though also reminds us again much more that the church is the whole people of God. The church is simply not the pope and the bishops, but the whole people of God. And therefore the teaching as proposed by pope and bishops has to take account of the lived experience of the people of God. And in the light then of that, I think we should change some of our present teachings. So those are three points that I would make with regard to my understanding of the, the role of, uh, of authority in the church today and the thorny question of authority and dissent.